If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we're going to do is draw current in each section of the circuit. So for example, if we look at the 12 volt battery, we can imagine current flowing out of the battery and we can label that current I1. Now as current I1 flows through the circuit, it's eventually going to reach a junction right here. Some of that current will flow down in this direction and we can label that I2 and the rest of the current will continue on to the right. and We can call that I3. What we will do next is imagine that this ignition switch is closed, forming a complete circuit around the outer perimeter of the circuit. And we're going to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. And to do that, we can imagine that we're starting at this point marked with an X, and we're going to move around the outer perimeter until we return back to where we started. As we do this, we want to keep track of the potential changes. Now, the first potential change we encounter is crossing this battery from the negative to the positive terminal. And whenever we move from the negative to the positive terminal of a battery, that is a positive potential change. So we would have positive 12 volts so far. Then we move through the resistor marked with 0.01 ohms. And notice that we, we, we would be moving with the current that's marked I1. Whenever you're moving with the current, that represents a negative potential change. And that potential change, we recall, through a resistor, is equal to the current times the resistance. So we're going to take the current of I1 and multiply it by the resistance of 0 0.01. We'll actually put the resistance first for simplicity. So it becomes 0 0.01 times I1. Continuing around the outer perimeter, we eventually encounter this resistor. Notice in this case, we would be moving with the current marked I3. So again, that's a negative potential change. And it will equal the resistance of 0 0.06 multiplied by the current I3. We continue around the outer perimeter until we return to where we started. And at that point, we could set the total potential change equal to zero. We'll go ahead and solve this equation for the current I1 by adding the 0 0.01 I1 over to the right hand side and then dividing all terms by 0 0.01. Now this equation solved for I1 we're going to hold on to and refer back to shortly. Next we're going to apply another loop rule but this time we're going to start right here where this orange X is and we're going to move around the rightmost loop in this fashion and then return back to the orange X. So we'll go ahead and do that and keep track of potential changes. We're moving from the negative to the positive terminal of that battery, so we would have a 10 volt potential change. And then we would be moving against the current marked I2. Now, when we're moving against current, that represents a positive potential change, and that will equal the resistance times the current I2. So we would have one times I2. We would then continue, remember we're going in this direction of the rightmost loop, and we would be going with the current marked I3 and passing through this resistor, since we're going with the current, that would be a negative potential change equal to 0 0.06 times I3. And then we continue our journey and return back to the orange X, so we can set that equal to zero. We'll solve this equation for I2 by adding the 0 0.06 I3 to the right and subtracting 10 over to the right. And again, we're going to hold on to this equation and use it momentarily. Now we'll head back over to the junction that we referred to earlier. We can see that current I1 is flowing into the junction, but then currents I2 as well as I3 are flowing out of the junction. So remember, we could set the current into the junction equal to the current out of the junction. That's referred to as the Kirchhoff's junction rule. And now what's nice is we can finally use the equations that we boxed off earlier. We're going to take this expression for I1 and plug it in for I1, and then take this expression for I2 and plug it in for I2. And so neatly we have an equation in terms of just a single variable I3, and so what we'll do is solve for I3, and to do that we can add the 6 I3 over to the right and then add the 10 over to the left, and then we'll divide both sides by 7.06, and when we do that we get approximately 170 amps for I3. Now notice from the diagram that I3 was the current that's flowing through the starter. And so we've actually answered part A of the question by solving for I3. From the diagram again, we can see that the current flowing through the dead battery would be represented by I2. So we'll plug in our value for I3 into this orange equation and that will allow us to solve for I2. 
And when we do that, we get approximately 0 0.20 amps. So this would be the current flowing through the dead battery. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and share it with your friends. Also, you're welcome to subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.